Sitters, as we, we are marching through the Sitter, and we're, we're talking now about the laws of the Catholic Dioma and the process of Catholic Dioma. So with the finished talking about the evening service, and now we're part three of counting the Omer. So um, when we count the Omer, which as we've discussed, is uh, during the uh, seven week period between the second night of Passover and the holiday of Shabbat. Um, when, when we count, every night we count, we count the day and we count the week. Now it's important to keep in mind that when we count the Omer, it's necessary to understand what you're saying. So if you don't speak Hebrew and you say, Hayom Yom Echad Omer, right? That's the first count, Hayom Yom Echad Omer. If you don't understand what that means because you don't speak that language, so then you haven't fulfilled your obligation of counting because the idea is that you count every day. But if you're just saying a bunch of Hebrew words that just sound holy, but have no meaning to you, then you haven't actually done anything. So it's important when we count to make sure that we understand what we're saying. So if you don't speak Hebrew, you can say it in Hebrew, sure, but also make sure to say it in whichever language you understand. Here we have our, our PDF that we have today's one day of Yom. We say it in English, say it in a language that you understand so that the day is counted. That's uh, another law that relates to the counting of the Omer, which relates to something we'll talk about. Hopefully we'll come back to that in a moment. Now, after we finish, we, we talked about the blessing, we talked about the count and how the count goes and the meaning for the count. We talked about the prayer that we say right after the count, which is that the merciful one restore unto us the service of the Beit HaMikdash. We discussed why we say that. But then afterwards, you'll see on the bottom of page 139, we begin a series of three paragraphs. We've got La uh, Matzeh in Yunus. This is the Psalm 67, I believe it is. And, um, and then we have here on page 140, we have Anna Bechach, this mystical prayer in the middle of the page. And then we have this Rebono Shalala, Master of the Universe, this special prayer here on the bottom of page 140. So three paragraphs um, um, that we say after the counting of the Omer. These paragraphs were introduced by the Arizal, by Rabbi Isaac Furia, the great uh, mystic. Um, and what's interesting is you'll notice that, um, we'll get back to in a moment to, to these three paragraphs, but you'll notice when you look at the, uh, at the counting of the Omer, let's go back to just the first one, right? I'm on page 136 here. You'll see here, follow my cursor, you've got, okay, so we haven't inserted here on the top the date, so this helps people keep track of the count. That's not in the original sitter, and that's not really part of the count, it's just an aid in this in, in the user-friendly sitter version. But you'll see you have Hayom Yom Echad Omer, that's the count, right? Under it, you see two words, Chesed Shabbat Chesed. And then to the left of it, you see a Yud, you see two words, Elohim, and the word Ana, right? So you've got Two words here on the bottom, and you've got a letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and then two more words here on the left. What is the significance of all of this? So now we return. So when we when we say that when we count the Omer, we say this line, right? So on the first line we'll say Yom Yom Echad Omer. That's the count. Chesed Shabbat Chesed here is something we'll, we'll verbalize a little bit later as well. But what is the significance of these words and these these words and letters here? So when we go back to page one thirty nine at the bottom, we have. Psalm 67. Psalm 67 is uh, known as the Menorah Psalm, and that's because it has 49 words, if, you, if you're excluding these first four words, which is the opening verse, which is sort of an introduction, as you see for the choir master, a song with instrumental music, a psalm, that's the introduction, and the psalm from beginning from verse 2 and on has 49 words. So each one of these words, 49, of course we know the significance, 49, with the counting of the Omers, the counting of the Omers, we count 49 days. So every word in the psalm uh, uh, is connected with the day. Why is it called the Menorah Psalm? In fact, in some uh, prayer books, I believe actually the Psalm is, is laid out in the form of a Menorah. And that's because in the Menorah, the Menorah, the candelabra in the temple, there was also, uh, there were 49 sort of decorations, ornaments on the, on the Menorah. You had the cups, you had the, the flowers, and you had the, um, the, uh, the knots that were on the uh, Menorah. All of those elements that uh, were the decoration um, of the Menorah were a total of 49. So it corresponds to the menorah, which is obviously also significant and relative to what we're talking about here in the in, in, in a moment uh, about the counting of the Omer. So we have 49. So each day of the counting of the Omer corresponds to another word of the psalm. But then you have something else, which is here, the last word on page 139, Yismichu. Yeah, Yismichu. Um, yeah, where is it here? Again. Yeah, Yismichu Viraninu. Right? So that verse, um, this verse, that uh, continues at the top of page 140 and ends uh, with the word Sela. This verse has 49 letters, okay? The nations will rejoice and sing for joy. You, uh, for you, will judge the people justly and guide the nations on earth forever, right? So this verse has 49 Hebrew letters. Every day of the counting of the Omer corresponds to another one of the letters. So you bear that in mind as well when we're counting the Omer. Then we come to uh, this prayer here, Anna Bechach, we talked about it, it can be recorded, but we talked about it in our beginning when we, when we were going through the, the early part of the Siddur. We encountered this prayer as well. Um, and this is a very mystical prayer. It's got, 
excuse me, it's got 49, uh, 42, excuse me, 42 words. It, it corresponds to the 42 uh, lettered uh, name or the, the numerical value of 42, the, the, the name of God that is the numerical value, value of 42, Shem Ab. Um, and what it is, is, uh, is a series of lines here, seven lines. Uh, and uh, these lines each have three words on each line, right? And these words correspond to what you see in the left-hand column here, uh, the, the acronyms that they spell, right? The, the first letters of each of those words that spell uh, these acronyms here, which correspond to this divine the mystical name of God. So if you've got seven lines with six words apiece, right, on each line, so that would give us what? 42, right? Plus these, uh, the left column, you've got these combinations of those six. So that's a total of seven on each line. So seven times seven, 49. So each day of the counting of the Yomar corresponds to another word, um, uh, another uh, another word of this Anabachah prayer. Um, and after you finish the words of line, the next day would correspond to this combination, the formula, and then we continue uh, one word. Each. Then we said there was, we, we, we talked about the first, um, when we look at the first day, we also had, the words chesed shabbat chesed. So here, we know that that um, Abba teaches us we have seven emotions, seven emotional faculties. And the, the counting of the Omer, we talked about some practical uh, historical reasons for the counting of the Omer, but but the mystical deeper reason is that we we refine our character. Every day of the counting of the Omer is a time of, of introspection, reflection. We touched on this, I think, in the last, the end of the last installment on Monday. Um, maybe it was recorded, maybe it wasn't. Uh, this idea that uh, I think it was after we stopped recording uh, that that you know we go from Passover when we're this new uh, nascent nation we're just we're we're we're, we're just getting started and now it's, we we go through the process of refining ourselves and, and preparing ourselves to receive the Torah and Mount Sinai to become God's chosen people and His holy people. So the way we do that is by reflecting and by 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 you know refining our character. So every day we focus on another element of our character. Our primary emotions are seven. Right? You've got seven emotions. Each emotion is inclusive of all other seven. So there's kindness. That's the general emotion. But within kindness, you have kindness of kindness. You also have severity of kindness. You have compassion and kindness because all of our emotions are multifaceted. They're not one-dimensional. And so therefore, there's an element, you know, you can be kind and the kindness is just pure kindness. You can be kind and that kindness is also tinged with a, a sense of compassion. You can be kind and that kindness uh, is, is, is uh, with, 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 with judgment. Right, and, and uh, so, so each one of these emotions is inclusive of all other seven. So it's seven times seven, that's 49. So every day we work on another element and a sub-element of our uh, emotional character. And so that brings us to this third paragraph, this, this prayer, Rebona Shalom, the Master of the Universe, where we talk about this idea that God, that God commands us to count the, uh, the, the Omer. And the reason is, in order for us to uh, be cleansed, so for your people Israel may be cleansed from their defilement, right? And then we say that by, by um, today I count that I, I hope that I have fixed whatever blemish that I've been caused and be, be rectified that I may be purified and sanctified with supernal holiness, right? So this is, this is the, the, the prayer, the concluding prayer of the, of the counting of the Omer process where we talk about this idea of, of self-improvement and refinement and refining and elevating our character. So this is uh, the counting of the Omer. I, I, I just want to point out and we'll, we'll wrap it up with this. Um, the, the Rebbe notes that the Alter Rebbe said, of course, we're, 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 we're praying from the Alter Rebbe's uh, uh, version of the prayer. The Alter Rebbe edited the prayer book and all in, in sync and in accordance with the mystical meditations and, and devotions of the Arizal of, of Rabbi Isaac Maria. Um, and in his Siddur, in his version of his Siddur, the one that he actually uh, published himself, there is, um, he puts counting of the Omer all the way in the back. So the last thing in the book is the counting of the Omer. So the Rebbe notes that in our prayer book here, we have it in the middle. We have it sort of in its place right after the evening service because, you know, for seven weeks out of the year, uh, we, we, encounter, we, we have to say it right after the evening service. So for convenience, it's put where we put it here um, in, 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 in right after the evening service. But in the Rebbe said that he has it all the way in the end, which is out of sequence really of, of, his, of, of, of his prayer book. So the Rebbe says, that the reason is because it's sort of the, the parting message from the prayer book. When you finish your prayer book, in other words, the counting of the Omer sort of expresses and captures what prayer is all about, which is why it's sort of like the, the last thing that we have that we encounter in this prayer book. And one of the similarities of so some of them, he notes that um, when it comes to prayer, um, when we pray, we, um, uh, if we don't understand what we're saying, then we're not praying. Prayer is supposed to be a personal, meaningful experience. It's a conversation, the dialogue we have with God. 
and therefore, if you pray without any intention, you just say the words and you don't know what you're saying, so you're not doing it, you're not praying. Prayer is supposed to be a personal conversation and experience and connection with God. So, but if it's, if it's completely meaningless, then, there, then there's no connection. So when it comes to prayer, we need to understand what we're saying. Um, we need to be mindful and deliberate in what we're saying. And that's, that's how you have prayer. Similarly, when it comes to counting the Yom, as I started to, uh, this, this little segment here, uh, we have to understand what we're saying. If you count the Yom, you don't speak Hebrew, and you're just saying a bunch of Hebrew words that sound, uh, sound very spiritual, you haven't done the mitzvah of counting the Yom. You need to understand what you're saying. It's a similarity. Another similarity, I mean, there are yeah, several others, but we'll just finish with one more, is what we just finished with here about, about refinement. Prayer, the process of prayer is about elevate, elevating ourselves, refining ourselves, sensitizing ourselves. We can go through life and, um, and, not, and, and not pay attention, and not, not grow, and not pay attention to the blessings we have, not pay attention, pay attention to, the, to, to the, 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 the space that God occupies in our lives and the blessings that he constantly showers upon us. We can be completely blind to it. Prayer is the process where we take, take a step back, take a deep breath, and we focus on the blessings we have. We focus on the gift of life that God gives us. We focus on our relationship with God. And we deepen that relationship. We, we yearn to connect with God, to come close to God, to not be alone. That's what prayer is all about. So prayer is one of the functions of prayer, besides just, is, is, besides just connection with God, sort of almost a byproduct of that in a sense as well, is that it refines us, it elevates us, it, it, it sensitizes us. We become more sensitive to spirituality, sensitive to others. And, and, and so we become better people when we pray and we pray properly. Similarly, the counting of the Yomer has the same purpose, same function, which is that every day we count the day, day is significant. What's today? What did I do today? Where am I today? Where am I holding today? Where am I going tomorrow? And when we count every single day, when the day is significant, we count it and we reflect on our own character, we continue to grow and we continue to develop, which is similar to the function of prayer. Okay, that is... Uh, that's uh, what I got for you guys today. Thank you all for joining. Thank you. I'll see all of you all on uh, Monday. Um, I, I, got, I saw what you mentioned in the chat, but it's hard for me to follow and, and, and see what's going, tracking what's going on in the chat. Not answer now, whenever you get a chance. Multitask, but the answer to your question is that I've not yet found uh, a Valetian set to any tune. So if you want to take the time and set it to one that works, <laughs> would be my guest. And then as far as standing and sitting, you're right, it does bother me that we don't do the standing and sitting part, but I just, I'm sitting at my laptop, so right. I'm not in the right position. Um, I'm hoping that when everybody's praying along, they're standing and sitting in the right spots. But for me to stand up and just show you my uh, belt buckle during prayer is just not a good visual, I don't think, on my camera. Oh, okay. so, uh, so that's kind of why we, I do it that way, but you're right about that. Okay, everybody. Thanks for joining. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you all again yeah, on Monday. Good Shabbos, everyone. Thank you. Good Shabbos. Bye. Bye, everyone.